Now, you might be saying, well, you know, Matt, it, off, it looks like you could use uh, a dat or a chop here, so why did we convert this to a chop? That seems uh, like we didn't need to do that. I don't like that. I don't like extra steps. And I don't blame you. I don't like extra steps either. One of the reasons I made us do that is that in general, chops are going to be a much, much faster means of getting the instance information over to our GPU. That's not to say that we can't do it with tables. It's just to say that with tables, we're going to max out at some point in the responsiveness and the efficiency of using them. So if we can, from the get-go, start to think about how we think of chops as being responsible for that, we're going to be much happier. right? And, and part of the other thing that we need to understand here is that if we look closely at these two things, we can see that what's represented here as columns is converted into channels, and each one of our rows is representative of a sample. Right, so we can see that TX, for example, we've got one here that's at negative one. We could zoom in. And in fact, if we want to see an even better representation of this, we can make this viewer active, right click on this, and we can turn on dots. You can see over here that's dot per sample. So that lets us kind of see more clearly that we've got a negative one, negative one. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So it's, it becomes really valuable the more we can start to understand the kind of inherent nature of the way chops work for us to be able to then take uh, advantage of how powerful they are. Okay, you're going to say, well, this is all, you know, this is great and all that, but it's not particularly sexy. And that's, you know, I'm not going to disagree with you about that. So let's go ahead and add a noise chop here. And in the noise chop, let's head over to our channel page. And we're going to use some pattern matching. We're going to say T. We're going to use some square brackets, X, Y, Z. And now we end up with a whole bunch of samples in here. And this is the same as saying TX space TY TZ. We could do it the same way. Or we can save ourselves a little bit of typing by using our square brackets. OK, so we've got x, y, z representations here. Let's go ahead and plug that into a math, right? Because here, kind of at the get-go, well, let's go ahead and just uh, see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and plug this math right into our null. Again, this is part of the magic of using a null, right, is that it means that we don't have to re-kind of figure out all of our connections. Our null is kind of taking care of that for us already. This is still awfully big. Let's go ahead and turn down the scale of our box a little bit more. I'm going to scooch it down to maybe 0, 0, 005. All right, that's not so bad. Um, and now we can see that, you know, this is all right, but things are pretty crowded here. So let's use our math. And over on our range page, we're going to let negative 1 to 1 describe a coordinate space as instead negative 2 to 2. Now this might not be, you know, it might not be terribly useful to kind of look at this flat and rendered, so we could split our view, and we could go ahead and open up our geometry viewer, and now we can actually much more clearly see where our camera is and what that means in terms of where our instances are. All right, that's pretty good. You know, I feel like we could push this a little bit harder. So let's scoot our noise over here just a little bit. And in our noise, let's go ahead and add a space, r, square brackets, x, y, z. So now we've got some, x, some rotation values here. Let's insert a select. And we're going to select just channels that start, or excuse me, just the channels that are t, x, y, z. And you're going to say, wait, wait, I don't, I don't get what you're doing, Matt. Well, part of what we're after here is the way that we scale this set of um, noise, right? So we want our uh, kind of coordinate values in terms of their x, y, z location to have a different range of scaling from our rotation values. So we can actually just copy paste this business. We're going to change this to r. So here's our rx, ry, rz. 
and I want this now to uh, represent a space that says 0 to 180. So negative 1 to 1 is now going to be expressed as 0 to 180. We're going to add a merge, not a merge, but a merge chop in here. We'll kind of combine all these back together. We'll go ahead and plug those back into our null. And now we can see that we've got some rotation here as well. And in fact, we could push that a little bit harder. Maybe we want that to be 360. Maybe we want it to be negative 360 to 360. Right, so now we can see how these things are kind of spaced out here a little bit more. Now you might be saying, you know, that's, that's pretty slick, but uh, I want more. Well, I don't blame you. I always want more. So let's go ahead and add scale. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy paste this out. We're going to grab just scale as the value that we want to take a look at. Our negative one to one, maybe we want that to be represented as a, let's say, 0 0.5 to 2.5. We'll plug that into our merge. Now before when we were setting this up, we didn't actually assign any scaling values. So we've got to come in here and make sure that all works here. So SX, scale X, scale Y, scale Z. So we just need to make sure that scale is represented here as well. Right, so now we're, you know, we're kind of cooking with gas here a little bit. That's pretty good, but what if we could do something like color, right? So RGB. Let's do the same thing. We're going to copy paste. I want RGB. Now in this case, our color values uh, can be expressed in a normalized fashion from 0 to 1. So we're just going to take negative 1 to 1 is going to be mapped 0 to 1. Let's take a look at what that looks like. We might decide that we don't like that. Here on the instance 2 page, down here at the bottom, we're going to replace R with R, G with G, and B with B. All right, so now we've got this kind of, you know, soft color palette that's interesting. If we decided that, you know, maybe we don't want to start at 0, we want to start at 0 0.5, we could do that. That's fun also. Right, we've got kind of a, a playful way to think about what this looks like. Now, we can also do something fun, like we could animate our noise. So here on the transform page of our noise, under the TZ parameter, I'm going to put in abs time dot seconds. And now we're animating this noise, which also happens to be changing the rotation, which also happens to be changing the color. Right, so now we've got something that's kind of moving over time. Now, if you want to see that kind of in a more spectacular fashion, we can multiply it by 2, or maybe by 10. We'll really see it move at 10. And now we can start to see that this thing is actually, you know, cooking with gas here.